Okay, and we're live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Saturday. <laughs> what is? Oh no, I just went. I can't live. hear her. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Let me know if you can hear me. I'm on my phone. So if you can't hear me, I might have to change technology. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. Um, can you see me or is it, oh. is it, is the sound working? Okay. Um, hello, hello. Oh. Just waiting to get any feedback to let me know if my sound is working. And if it is, then I yes. will start. Okay, it's working? It's just late. Okay. Okay, great. So, <laughs> welcome to our weekly Saturday's Starseed Mission Support. Um, this week is going to be a little bit different because I am traveling right now and I'm excited to give you guys a grid work update. Um, I will show you guys that we are right out here on the ocean. And it's been so great hanging out with her. She's magnificent. And I remember when we first I like got off the airplane and we got into a rental car and she immediately started to um, let me know all these things that she wanted <laughs> me to help her do. And I was like, wow, you're not waiting. She's just like, I've been waiting for you. So there was no, there was no time that was wasted. We were really, Whew, I tune into this energy, so I'm not going to be offering a live healing today because I just don't have my gear with me and the internet's not super great, but I do have my tech support, Nay, who's at home, and she's going to be streaming this sound healing that my team and I did yesterday morning on the beach. Um, the conference room is kind of just on the beach overlooking the ocean, and we brought in these energies that supported um, I really felt into how the ocean is so deeply connected to our bodies and to our emotions and all the pollution that's in the water is really reflected in all of the pollution that we have in our lymphatic system, which keeps humanity from perceiving the spectrums of light and consciousness that, you know, are actually coming in into the world. So there was a lot of sludge that needed to be processed and like you know that's kind of a big job so it's continuing so the recording is going to tune us in and we're going to do some of that work i don't think i can see any of your oh i can see i can see your messages but it's kind of hard to see them because i'm on my phone but I really wanted to keep the Saturday sessions consistent. So that's why I'm showing up today. I wanted to just give you guys a, a brief update on the ground. One exciting thing that happened <laughs> um, is actually super distracting when I see the comments because then I want to like please every person. <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> when you're people pleaser, um, parts just come up and there's like a hundred people that you want to please all at the same time. Yeah. It's like kind of chaotic. So it's good that I actually can't see it. Sometimes I block it just so I don't see them. And you know, you guys are super nice, but once in a while there is like that one jerk that just wants to like thumb down your video and make your day shitty. So yeah, obviously I shouldn't really care about that, but there's a little part of me that's really sensitive still. So I just don't go there but anyway hi everybody i love you and i'm so happy that we're here together um, now i have some exciting updates for you the first thing that i really noticed when i got off the airplane is that there was extreme human trafficking energy here in this region of the world and it made a lot of sense because as soon as i got off the airplane i saw all these ads for disney world and it, then it hit me and it made sense why last week's video was all about human trafficking and I was being kind of prepped by these energies to um, just be prepared in my grid work here this week. Um, 
and I'm super lucky that you guys are here to support and that we're all working together. It's just so much more possible when we pool our energy together, right? Like when you want to just heal the whole world yourself, it seems like this crazy burden, crazy task that you can't accomplish. But when you come together, when we all come together and there's hundreds of us here on the live stream, all of a sudden it's just kind of like we're having this celebrative festive party together and we're pulling our love um, and compassion and joy and excitement into this collective energy field and we're directing that in ways that are positive. So in a way it feels like sort of a next step even to the group meditation phenomena. I know that sometimes you guys are like, we should meditate together. I feel like um, these kind of conscious meditations that we do where we intentionally activate specific energy and direct them in very specific directions, it may be even more effective than just meditating because when you just meditate together, you know, we kind of just like sit there and the energy is not really directed towards any goal. And while we might get peaceful, you know, not everyone will really meditate. Like we might start thinking about stuff. Like it's not the most efficient way to work, I think. So um, I feel like it's even more powerful when we come together with an actual intention and move through a series of intentions in our mind to actually direct that energy very specifically at things through bringing in experiences and codes through our own body. So, you know, when we try to go and heal the human trafficking situation on earth, um, we brought in codes that corrected and healed the distortions of sexuality in our own body. I realized that because our body is infinitely and inherently connected to the external and macrocosmic world, then everything that we're doing in this petri dish of our own body and our own DNA is very directly affecting the world, especially if we're all activating and restoring the codes together all at once. Um, and so the reason, another reason why I love to work that way is that, you know, if we still carry these traumas and distortions in our own body and we try to go out there and immediately start things out there, we're actually kind of trip, we'll trip up on ourselves. We won't really be able to accomplish anything because ultimately creation starts from frequency. And so it would be counterproductive to try to do things when the frequencies are still really strong vibrating inside of our body. So it's kind of like an inwards then outwards process that we're really embodying here together every weekend. So back to Disney World, I landed in the airport and I was just seeing all these ads for Disney World and the vibrations were so thick and I think this is really from just me living out in the forest um, with very few people <laughs> and very far away from the city. Um, what ended up happening is we get really attuned to just like the pure vibration of life and of the land and of trees. You know, I can literally feel the trees when I'm just chilling in my house. I can like feel the vibration of the trees. That's how like subtle and pristine it is out there. Not a lot of people. And so when I get used to that, and then, then I come out into the world, every little thing becomes so much more exaggerated. Um, when we live inside the city, you know, a lot of these frequencies just kind of become the toxic kind of um, bubble. And we get used to these frequencies um, that we don't really even notice that they're distorted or they're present or they're destructive in any way. So when I landed in Orlando, this frequency of human trafficking was so dense in the air that it was kind of impossible to ignore. Um, part of it, I realized, was even just the idea of Disney and how a lot of the concepts in a lot of Disney movies um, have this programming factor of wanting to program our children to exist inside of a false reality. And so even that itself, I think it's a kind of human trafficking because you're trafficking human consciousness. You're trafficking the soul and trapping it inside of a body through installing a false reality. So that is like the core um, societal version of cultural human trafficking that humanity is undergoing um, on the surface of the planet. And that's not even to say 
the other kinds of human trafficking for real that actually happens where people and children are being placed in sexual and human slavery. So there's kind of all these different levels of this spiritual and human abuse um, and energetic siphoning that's occurring on this planet. And so, yeah, the energy was pretty rough, obviously coming into that. And when we drove out into to the ocean, I was once again reminded that this is the most important energy that we need to be balancing on the planet right now. I know that there are a lot of other grid workers that are saying the same thing. I received messages from quite a few of you last week. They're like, wow, I just tuned into the earth and I asked her, you know, what is the highest priority energy? How can I be of service? And the earth has just been telling everybody, like, we need to go in and correct this. Well, of course, that makes sense, right? So went out to the ocean and um there was an activation that came in what the ocean said was that it was difficult for her to integrate all of the solar information that was coming in because when you think about it our planet is 70 percent water and water is actually conscious um, it carries consciousness it permeates consciousness it transmits consciousness and it holds consciousness and energy and so um, in the same way that, you know, it's almost like the blood that transmits um, and carries oxygen or life force through the body, the ocean is kind of like transducing this evolutionary pulses that come from the sun. So the way that I perceive evolutionary pulses is that um, light information from the sun is actually conscious. And so the sun communicates with the living organisms on the earth, different um, pieces of information that initiates um, evolution and change. So basically, you know, let's just say the human body, when a baby is born, or even just when the egg and sperm come together, the form of the human being in its full grown state is already present in the DNA. Even though the, the, the particles are still really small and the whole human hasn't materialized yet, there are go codons and impulses in the human body that tells the body to grow. And, you know, I've seen this in even my neighbor's kitten, where it's like the go codon goes and the kitten's like the same size and then over like a two hour period, it's like an inch, inch bigger. <laughs> and I think you see this in teenagers as well, you know, these growth spurts. So that happens on a societal level where you see that over certain ages, you know, there are periods of extreme and intense growth and then periods of integration. So it's actually the sun that's carrying the information and activating the go codons to when human collectives are evolving. And of course, you know, all living life forms um, and that collective consciousness is really being held together by the ley line system. So because of all the pollution in the ocean she was saying hey you know i've really been holding it together but at this point it's really hard to hold all of these high vibrational codes and to integrate and to um, disseminate these evolutionary codes from the sun when my body is sick and that makes a lot of sense and i think this reflects of course to our human bodies you know, if our lymphatic system is all clogged up, which, you know, if you've never done any sort of cleanse and you grew up in the false matrix, eating cardboard and GMOs and food dyes and glyphosate, um, basically, if you just put any processed or even GMO vegetables or, you know, even non-GMO vegetables, some of them are just covered in latent toxicity that's falling from the sky um, and then chemtrails and everything. So if you you know, go to the grocery store for your source of food, meaning you don't grow it in your own garden with purified water, the chances are there's all sorts of different levels of toxicity in your body. And I know that clearing the lymphatic system was actually an entire initiation in my life. And that initiation occurred mostly through working with ayahuasca, because for whatever reason, I needed to expunge <laughs> A lot of toxicity in a short period of time in order to integrate or be on my soul mission or whatever. I don't believe that everybody needs to suffer through that process. 
Um, because for me, again, it was really accelerated. It happened all over a couple of months. And it happened in like 10 or 12 ayahuasca sessions where I was basically just like pulling. <laughs> and I swear to God, I was literally like on the medicine. I could control super minute muscles in my body. And I was literally squishing all of the polluted water and mucus out of my body and like doing the weirdest like sounds like you know like really just like and I was like how does this even work I felt I was pulling these parasites out of like all these crevices of my body and then like spitting or throwing it up sorry guys this is really gross all I'm trying to say here is that you don't have to go through that process um I think that would in itself be pretty traumatic for most people there are lots of other ways to purge and expunge and clean and renew our lymphatic system um, on a physical level over a longer period of time that's a lot more gentle and less chaotic um you know i <laughs> i think i have a lot of experience in these realms and so it was just kind of like yeah let's do it but anyway I know some of the, you guys are now wondering what are some ways that we can begin to move energy through our lymphatic system. So I will give a couple of tips here before we go on. One of them is the lymphatic self-massage. So getting plenty of exercise every day is really important because your lymphatic system doesn't have its own pump. So your heart pumps the blood through your body. And so you don't have to do anything. There's just already this pump that's pumping the blood through your body. That's its job. But with the lymphatic system, it kind of sits still unless we're moving it. And it's actually through moving our body that the hydraulics in the body moves to pump the lymphatic system. So when we are living a sedentary lifestyle, and man, you guys don't <laughs> even start thinking about those people that are just working in an office and they're sitting at their desk all day and they eat like the vending machine food all day long like we don't we do not want to go in to see what their multi-dimensional lymphatic system looks like um because the way that i have seen it is that you know the physical parasites i think one of them is candida i've seen the interdimensional body of candida it's very interesting because the physical phlegmy part of it is just the physical body of this interdimensional parasite and the energies that it thrives in are kind of like shame and embarrassment it's kind of like a swampy energy um so a lot of that ends up you know in our lymph lymphs in the in our hips and in our knees like in kind of like the deeper parts of our body um and so basically if we start to um, do the lymphatic self-massage and actually move our body so one thing that i hear is really good is jumping on a trampoline because when you're jumping on the trampoline again you're really hydro the hydraulics in your body is working you're pumping your lymph lymphatic system that then actually cleanses itself and moves the waste um, the lymphs in the body move the water and the water is like the plumbing. So it's like taking all of the toxins through the body and supposed to pump and pull it through and then eliminate it. But because, you know, humans are kind of living these sedentary lifestyles and the toxicity um, levels on the planet are just so extreme. I mean, these bodies were not created to handle this level of toxicity. The fact that human bodies, like most people are alive and still, you know, kind of enjoying their experience and not just like writhing in pain on the floor. I'm just like, wow, these bodies are really resilient. But obviously in order to function in our highest frequency and to have the purest, highest frequencies of cosmic creation energy to be flowing through these bodies, we need to have, you know, a purified and a clean vessel for that energy to actually move through us. And so basically when our vessel is clogged up, we are not able to even perceive the reality through a clear lens. And that is kind of why, you know, sometimes we try to wake up our family and they just literally can't even process or access the frequency that you're coming at them with. It's just like their body just literally can't understand or integrate it. Okay. So... And, you can actually find videos of the lymphatic self-massage 
on YouTube, basically what it is is that you can um, move top down or bottom up. Um, the chest actually does pump the lymph fluids out into elimination when the fluid returns back into this area. So dry brushing is a great way to brush your lymphs. Um, you basically need to massage and pull the lymphs um, towards your heart, right? So the lymphs exist on the side of the leg, on the foot. I won't do it. You can find an easy YouTube video about this, the lymphatic self-massage. And basically, you want to do that every single day. If you have any kind of inflammation, um, you know, swollen, any, any part of your body is swollen, you have fibromyalgia, there's random pains, pain in the lower back, all of these things, you know, you might just have a really clogged up lymphatic system and your body is inflamed because you can't process all the toxins that are in there. Um, so anyway, we are obviously experiencing that again, like, <laughs> I remember those intense ayahuasca ceremonies. Uh, by the way, I have never gone out to look for an ayahuasca ceremony. It's always came to me. Like, it even show up, showed up at my house, um, living out in the middle of nowhere. Like, this woman just came and was like, this ayahuasca is looking for you. So, um, I really think that if you're really meant to have an experience, the correct situation will align itself. Just because, you know, there's a lot. I see way more people getting into the wrong ceremonies than the right ceremonies happening not and that's not to say that obviously there are people out there that are serving the medicine in alignment but i'm just saying in our community right now it seems like anybody that has taken ayahuasca a couple times has become a shaman and are making exorbitant monies from it and is really freaking dangerous so just trust that if you're really meant to experience it that it's gonna come and it's not gonna be subtle um, the reason I say that is that a lot of times people want to take these plants as a shortcut and they want to use it to bypass, um, hard work that we can each accomplish. And then through doing that, we actually miss out on, um, you know, the details that we get when we move through things in a slower pace. And so definitely at this point, I realized that the plant medicine served a certain purpose, but it's not actually bringing me to the frequencies that I'm embodying now. And, you know, a couple weeks ago, I did this healing session on myself. And even in my session work with my clients, like what we're able to accomplish in one session, in one hour, just through pure energy, was way more than what was able to be accomplished, you know, in the eight hours when I was on the, on the medicine. However, ayahuasca is an amazing expunger of toxins for the physical body. And so that is what happened when I took it. And again, it was in this extraordinary situation where this man actually had ayahuasca visions about being my teacher. He saw me in these past lives. He's like, I have to be your teacher. Come travel with me, drink this medicine, whatever. And so it was kind of undeniable. You know, I couldn't at that point in my journey, like it just felt like I was meant to do that. So anyway, it was pretty intense what happened and the amount of all sorts of everything that came out of me in the form of water. And I noticed that when those things were cleared out of me, you know, I was clearer. I was naturally just feeling myself. You know, a lot of these consciousness based parasites that we experience, like I was saying, shame, guilt, fear, paranoia, all those things are actually usually, you know, stimulated by parasites that, um, either are feeding off of that energy or are using that energy to manipulate you to ingest sugar, which is something that they eat. And it's just real. Like when you have parasites in your body, you might crave things that are salty and that are sweet and that are bad for you, that are deep fried. And it's because you're not actually, you're like, well, this isn't good for me. So what is it actually nourishing? It's nourishing the bad, the bad, biome and the parasites that are living rent free in your body and emitting these emotional energies that are uncomfortable so if i realize that that's literally happening in my own body and i go out and i look at the ocean you know on the one hand i you know it's like when i communicate with 
beings or planets or nebulas or interdimensional aliens there's an inherent respect where it's like you know i'm your friend i'm your ally i love you i recognize that you are a part of me there's just like a very neutral loving respect um that is the fabric of that exchange so it's like i just communicate with the ocean as if it's my bro where's my sis and i'm like yeah, I recognize that you're a super powerful being, but I'm not going to be delusional about the fact that, like, you who are sick right now, right? I can't avoid that reality. And there's a lot of plastic, and it's actually festering these candida like um, interdimensional, like mostly lower etheric parasites that are altering the ability of this planet to assimilate assimilate higher light and of course then we spent the next while actually um, assisting the ocean in integrating and anchoring these light codes um, and then really focusing on just knowing that the ocean is going to be cleaned up and I think that this is another one of those huge issues you know same as human trafficking and if you missed last week's video I highly recommend going to watch it because this is kind of the approach that I take with everything. Once again, there's not really any shortcuts, right? Um, I understand that I'm here to embody mastery and to become the sovereign creator being that I am. So if I'm broke and I can't even pay my own rent and I can't even, you know, provide myself with what I need, how am I supposed to actually go out there and save the children, clean up the ocean, right? So this is like this alchemy. It's like, well, I can't just throw myself on the floor and in frustration being like, oh, okay, I'm too small. I can't do anything. At some point I have to just collect myself and go, okay, I have to be methodical about this. I have to heal myself. I have to embody my creator energy. I have to embody the frequency of infinite creatorship because that's what true abundance is. And when I truly embody that frequency, I'll be able to embody and create that reality in my physical life and when that energy begins to integrate and embody in the physical reality that's when i'm going to be able to command and create the resources that i need to correct this planetary situation which is what we're here to do and i think that this is a very strong energy that's coming through for us these days of really just realizing you know that we are the ground crew we are the angels, we are the aliens. I like to think that I had a, a conversation with Divine Mother recently and she said, you know, you are the answer to the prayers. You know, these beings, the animals, the planet, they prayed to creation to be healed and God sent us, right? We, God, our collective unity, we decided to come here and so, it's never really made any sense to me that people are like, oh, the government's going to fix it or some aliens are going to come from the sky. I'm like, I'm here. So um, how do I get to it? And this is how we do it. So I feel like cleaning up the oceans, you know, right now I'm really doing what I can. I travel to these places, I sing, I do these ceremonies, I go into the ocean, I pull in these codes, but I'm not satisfied with only doing that. I know that there's so much more that I can do. And so... Um, yeah, definitely working on the ground in 3D by working on creating higher frequency solutions and ways to create abundance. And I think that that is its own conversation. We'll probably have that as its own thing. Like, I feel like there is a lot of taboo and confusion and judgment around money in the New Age community. I will say that some of it do come from the CIA to keep light workers weak and broke so we can't do anything um, but again that's his own conversation and we'll have that conversation in probably next week or the week after um just so if there's anything else she wants us to say whew yeah so whew there's a field of emotional energy that 
we're going to clear together with the sound healing. And um, I want you to just keep this in mind as we um, move into the sound healing today. That so we think about water, water is very related to the elements of emotion. And what I'm feeling is that, you know, there's a lot of super difficult to process emotions. Just like think about, um, how do I even explain this? So let's, let's say like this. I remember when I was living in Montreal, um, my friends like to smoke weed. And so I never really do because I'm really sensitive. But I remember just like a couple of times when they're like, oh, it'll be fun, you know, just like take a token, don't be a boring jerk or whatever. So I'll just take a little, <laughs> take a little token. Then I would just like get tossed into this whole entire paranoia tri trip for like 10 hours where I think the CIA is after me. I think they're going to kick down the door. They're going to kidnap me and sacrifice me in a satanic ritual. And at that point, I wasn't awake at all. Like I never heard of these things. I didn't know about witchcraft. I didn't know about the human trafficking. I didn't really know about aliens. I was like, you know, just literally just with up. So um obviously like it was years later. <laughs> Hi husband. It wasn't until years later. It's my beautiful husband. <laughs> it wasn't it's actually our anniversary today. So Wish us a happy anniversary. We're deciding to renew the contract because it's great. <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> yeah, take a toke. Don't be a jerk face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I didn't even know about human trafficking. It wasn't until like four or five years later when I found out about pizza gain stuff like that. So it was just completely random. You know, you're like this piano student. And all of a sudden, you smoke some weed and you're like, the CIA is coming out. I didn't even know that the CIA were the bad guys, you know? So it was this totally random weird thing. And um, it's something that haunted me because it was like every single time that I smoked marijuana and... You know, that's not to say that I didn't also have extraordinarily beautiful experiences. It was just a very wide spectrum. I realized that it's only when I am in a wrong environment, like I'm surrounded by other people in a busy place or somewhere outside, um, that this happens. And if I really just, you know, I'm home by myself, I actually begin to connect with very beautiful energy. And so very many years later, um, after being just pretty scarred and traumatized by these experiences of being completely terrified that some people were going to come and like, you know, sacrifice me <laughs> in a satanic ritual, I decided that I would face the fear and figure out, you know, what is up with that. And so I was in Peru, I was in my house, I was alone. I was like, this is a good time. You know, I'm going to just go in at that point I was working with marijuana maybe once a year in a sacred ceremony in my own space and I was like today I'm going to figure out why this energy always comes up like is it a past life thing what is it and when I went in I saw the spirit of the plant the cannabis plant and I said you know why am I always terrified of this thing and I was shown that you know when you think about it um the emotions that the victims experience during those rituals and, you know, even just in sexual slavery, it's extreme. It's extreme emotions, extreme experience. It really is like the pinnacle of energy, right? And it's not like human beings are really existing in even the opposite frequencies of joy and excitement and pleasure, ecstasy. Uh, most people are kind of just in this like lull of mediocreness mediocre energy and so the that fear that ritual um victims feel and that excruciating pain that those victims of sexual abuse and sexual slavery experience especially if they're children you think about how expressive children are and how present they are with their feelings that is the energy those are the energies that etched into our collective consciousness and into the field and into the ley lines and into our collective energy body here on earth and so whenever i smoke weed i just immediately 
popped into that because it's the strongest kind of terrible thing in the field. Um, so when I came down here to the ocean, I definitely felt a lot of that energy being washed out into the ocean. And because the ocean is polluted and it's all like coagulated, I mean, think about how if your body is all clogged up, you're not able to process emotions in the same way, right? When you think about how a lot of times people will gain weight, I've heard people say that our extra weight is tears that we haven't cried, which I really resonate as a cancer, as a water being. <laughs> like, I got to cry it out or, you know, the, the tears will turn into fat or protection or padding. So then, you know, that's also the lymphatic system just getting clogged up and we inf inflame and get swollen. So that water energy that those emotions just are getting washed into the ocean and the ocean's not able to process it in the same way because it's clogged up with these lower etheric parasites and the plastics and, um, whew, and I know that the ocean is resilient and that we are here to hold a lot of space. I've watched new life forms be birthed into the ocean before i would see these new strands of dna like come in through the etheric layers of the um of the sky and they come into the ocean i know that in in time 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 as we experience it there will be creatures that we've never seen on this planet before or definitely are not seeing now begin to appear you know on on new earth in this new planet so in this very awkward transition um, I am experiencing the experience of doing some cleanup um, vibrationally in the third realms in the ocean and empowering myself as a creator being to get strong and experience my infinite creativity and be aligned with an aligned um, heart. Um, Somebody said this beautiful quote to me this morning. I loved it so much. I asked him to say it twice. And it's heart, hands to work, heart to God. And I just loved it so much. And that's exactly what it is. You know, stay busy. Do the good work. Uh, make sure that we're motivated by nothing but our love for all of creation. And that's just what we're here to do. So we're going to get into our sound healing today again i don't really have my year and i'm really tired so um i'm still doing my talk tomorrow at this conference i am probably going to share that recording with you guys um tomorrow or sorry when i get back home <laughs> from the conference um but yeah we're gonna play this recording i'm just gonna surprise they're right there hi taryn <laughs> hi Vina. so you're gonna see us I'm going to play a recording. <laughs> I'm going to play a recording of the sound healing ceremony that we did yesterday morning. And I just want to, you know, I uh, want you to keep in mind that the planet and us are one. And we are microcosmic reflections of the planetary um, health in a big way. And so we have to address these issues on all fronts. And obviously, we can't just meditate on these issues. Um, but these energies are definitely helping like acupuncture helps us right um, but we also need to work out and work on our root traumas so we can be fully here and have the resources we need to actually really change the world from the ground up as well so i met lamarcus he is awesome um, we took some pictures together, and um, I'm so happy that you are hanging out. I'm just taking a brief scroll through the comments. <sighs> okay. So um, without further ado, I'm going to play the video, and I love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out here with me today. I can't wait to be home. I'm really a homebody, so this is kind of, but the sky is so pretty, and <laughs> anyway, 
nay, um, play the video. <laughs> Hello? You can Hello. hear me? Good day. Test, test, test. Should I start? Good day, everybody. Welcome. Are you guys ready? Come on in. you to bring your awareness to your breath. And if you'd like to close your eyes, if that helps you tune into the more subtle fields of the energetic reality. And begin to steadily breathe low and deep into the lower belly. Here you are safe. Here you are held and infinitely welcomed. Here you are seen as a perfectly wanted child in an infinite, abundant, and benevolent universe. Gently connecting in to our soul essence, our higher self.
of your nostrils. of your chest. And feel the love that the sun has for the earth. And the love that the earth has for you. And the love that you have for life. these vibrations of the truth of the infinite love pervading this universe we anchor those energies down into the earth
tendencies to soften, to dissolve any tension, any pain, any resistance or distance to experiencing this brilliance and this love that is you yourself. Bring your awareness back into your breath. Bringing your breath through your body. Bring your awareness to any place in your body where there might be tenderness or pain or tension. sound frequencies to caress them. To activate our original DNA. The original template and geometry of light information which allows our cosmic divine unity to flow through these vessels.
perfect team, source of all creation. We are commanding for all soul binds, curses, distortions in the DNA, all occupants and ids which are blocking all beings inside this energy field if it is in alignment with their highest love and joy for these energies to be cleared from our multi-dimensional body in all dimensions and all of time space in all parallel cells in all of our genetics opening up the feet chakras, allowing the energy to flow through your vessel entirely. Higher self, galactic team, source of all creation, commanding for all of the highest priority energies which are hindering all beings from experiencing our source oneness as ourself. Accessing our Christed higher self consciousness. We're requesting for these energies to be cleared from our multi dimensional body on all levels, in all dimensions, in all of time space, in all parallel aspects, and in all of our genetics. up into the soul star chakra about 8 to 12 inches above your head higher self galactic team source of all creation assist us in the activation of our soul star lighting it up like the sun tuning in to your own soul's essence frequency Through the heart, 
through the solar plexus. Through the sacral chakra. Through the root chakra. All the way down into the earth, into the earth star. Connecting in with the mycelial network of Gaia consciousness.